Hello everybody and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. And my name is Peter. Hello, Peter. Hello, Ben. Happy video game Saturday to you, my dude. Thank you. It happens every week. It's Saturday and we can, if we want to, play a game today. But not today when we're recording because it's not Saturday today. No, but the people who are listening on release day or in a factor of seven days afterwards. Yes. Uh, and then there's a cutoff. Yeah. And then nobody can listen anymore. Ever. 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 Except on those seven day intervals. Yes. Only listen on Saturdays. On the anniversary. Yeah. In a year's time. You'll be able to do this whole thing again. This, as we said, is a video game podcast where we talk about video games and stuff. And we are sponsored every single show by a different company. Mm. I don't know why. I I don't know why we can't keep down our sponsor just well, for a while. Maybe if you just... The pressure's on. But if you do this read properly for whoever is sponsoring... I don't know, sponsoring us this week, then, yeah. you know, it's all, it's all on you, Ben. Se- sell... Sell this slot. No pressure, huh? Yeah. No pr- no pressure, huh? 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 Uh, hello? <coughs> Did you hear that? Yeah. <coughs> oh, no. What, what was that noise? Uh, Intro- <coughs> Introducing. I'm holding it right here. Yeah, that... Mm. There it is. Hang on. I'm holding it right here. Yeah. It's uh, Kratos beard oil. Oh. And... It- <coughs> Can you hear that? Is that from inside... <coughs> It's it's you don't you never take off the lid, right? Because then it's it's full of spa. It's got an extra fifty worth of Spartan rage in it. No, oh, no. And you don't want. Basically, it makes your beard really good. Does it all the, the hair fall out of the top of your head though? You lose all the hair off the top of your head, oh. and you do you do murder your your wife and children. Oh, Jesus! In in an Ares inspired rage and hate to prove your loyalty. Hate your one remaining son. And then there's just an emotional distance, and you keep you do sort of like the Keanu Reeves hover hand. Mm. But it would like you're going to pet the child because that's what you do to children. You yeah, pet, you just pet them. You gently. pet the child, but then you don't. You pull away and you don't pet the child. Yeah. Thus, cement it. Oh. Goodness, I need, I shook it up a bit there, I'll put it down. And you don't even call him by his name, you just call him no. boy the whole time. Yes, exactly. Boy. Identity equals boy uh, yeah. the entire time. So that's the Kratos uh, beard oil. Oh. It's really furious, it's got uh, it's got extra Spartan rage in it, it's really spicy. It's like that caffeine shampoo, isn't it? But it's like <laughs> testosterone beard oil instead. Yeah, bollocks. Yeah. It's bollocks. Boswell <laughs> Um So you can buy that uh, right now, I'm going to put this over here. Hmm. Except you can't because that was a camera battery. It's oh, a lie. You got me. I got you all. Yeah. This might be why we can't hold down a sponsor is because oh, we, we they're not actually real. They're not real at the end. Oh. Uh, no, in fact, this Triple Jump podcast is brought to you by our wonderful patrons over at patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. If you support us at any tier, that's even one dollar do mm. a month, uh, then you can submit questions to the show. In fact, all the questions submitted. Uh, this week are from patrons. So, so if you'd like to join that elite, basically, you know how this this spon- this this podcast today is brought to you by you. Is kind of what you if you're a if you're a patron, it's brought to you by you. Yeah. If you're listening right now, this is only coming to your ears because of you and because your support. You, you did this. Yeah, you did. How, how could you? God. First question, Peter. Yeah. It comes from Duncan Wilson. It does. I just, that little sort of crack in my voice because I just saw his surname yeah. and tried just to, just not. We've heard from Duncan before. Yeah. Um, but is it weird that I also, when I was putting together the running order, I thought, <laughs> Duncan's Wilson. Yeah. That's, that's funny. I mean, it's only funny because that's in our lexicon as well. Like most people, not everyone, but most people don't say Wilson for 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 a Willie. For a William. But we decided that that's like the go-to word. And Wilson. now Duncan Duncan Wilson. Duncan's Wilson. Who can Wilson? Duncan Wilson. Duncan Duncan Wilson. Yeah. Uh however, we won't hear from Duncan again because he's uh, he's cancelled his Patreon support because oh. because we just took the make oh, out of his last name. Oh, sorry, Duncan. Uh, dear bearded Ben, Kratos beard oil. Mm. 
and tiny peepers. Kratos in, smallness. Kratos, Kratos boy, boy oil. Oh, no, I don't like that one. Boil. Uh. In a cheap Poundland knockoff style of Snog Mario Void, EA, Activision, and Ubisoft keep, downsize, or destroy? Good question. I've got, I've got a definitive answer for this, and I can justify every one of them really well. Do you want to talk me through that, then? Yeah. Tell me about it. Uh, I would keep Activision. Because they currently own the rights to Spyro the Dragon and Crash Bandicoot. Okay. And they're sort of kind of finally doing stuff with them yeah. that isn't sacrilegious. Mm. Um, they might now just stop now that they've made CTR and Insane Trilogy and Spyro, uh, the, the original trilogy. They, they might now just go back to Skylanders. But at the moment, they're treating them fairly respectfully. Mm. And if, if Activision disappeared and those rights went to someone else... It would be a roll of the dice as to whether they were going right. to be, you know, used yeah. properly. Uh, I would downsize Ubisoft because I quite like some of the things that they do, but they just make so many stupid shooter <laughs> games and they recycle so many concepts over and over again that I feel like if you just if you just rein it in, just, just like, calm down, Eve. Choose like two games. Eve, slow down, please, Eve. And, uh, you know, just just choose a couple of games. Work on those. Mm. You've got all the time and resources in the world if you're just focusing everything on those couple of games. So you can actually come up with new innovative stuff rather than re- actual, actual recycled actual animations. Actual recycled animations. Which they do in Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Uh, and finally, I would destroy EA because that is someone who I think should have Star Wars taken off them and given to someone else who might use it more respectfully. Right. It, as opposed to Activision and, and my my mascot platformer boys. Mm-hmm. So there you go. That's there you go. That's exactly what fair I enough. think quite strongly in all cases. That's fair. What about um, you? I've, I've got to say, I'm not a huge fan of any of these companies. Mm. I'd say some are more destructive no, yeah, than others. I agree. Uh, I've actually elected to keep Ubisoft okay. because while they don't make a damned thing that I care about anymore mm. because they, they did, oh, Far Cry 3, this kind of... This kind of works. Let's do that forever, yeah. every year. Mm. Uh, oh, Assassin's Creed. Oh, Assassin. This is People Assassin's like Creed. Two's pretty good. Oh, Brotherhood's great. Revelations is is fine. Assassin's Creed Three is a little bit worse. Let's keep doing these. Oh, make them bigger. Mm-hmm. Let's keep doing that every year forever. Complicate the modern day story to the point where Ooh, people get so mad no. with it that we have to suddenly wind it back and just make it cutscene only. I don't want it. I don't care about Splinter Cell. I don't care about Tom Clancy's gun fetish game Rip. Nine. R- rest in peace, Tom. Um, I just, I just don't care about anything they make. I don't like rabbits. No. I'm trying to think of an Ubisoft game that I enjoy. Trials, maybe? But even yeah. then, that's just, you know, it's a little, it's, oh, I don't mean to patronize, it's not little, but I, you know what I mean? It's not a, it's not a big budget AAA release. No. When you're talking about their big franchises, there's nothing that Ubisoft makes that makes me think, oh, maybe I will. Or maybe I won't, because I have a life outside of games and I want it to be respected. And I don't want to have to pre-order one of 12 different early access no. models that comes with digital nubbins. However, yeah. where I suspect you're going with this is that they at least are not infamous for their malpractice. Exactly. Right. Okay. So they are they are saved by virtue of not being bad enough yeah. uh, in this instance. Uh, let's talk about downsizing Activision, shall we? Yeah, okay. Because Activision, I feel like, is, alongside EA, one of the wealthiest and most despised video game companies. Mm. And I know that everything they do is an insidious, sort of just an insidious method of, of lining their shareholders' pockets. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Or their board of directors making them obscenely wealthy. That's why you get your microtransactions added into Crash Team Racing after all the reviews are in. That's mm-hmm. why Call of Duty has a ton of different modes, and some of them allow you to buy things with real money, and they know that people will, and so on and so forth. And they have lots of series like that. But yeah, you're right. They've got the they've got the mascot platformers. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Um, I don't dislike Call of Duty. I'm actually looking forward yeah. to the new one. Uh, you know, I liked Tony Hawk's. I don't know if that'll ever come back. Mm. They've got stuff, basically. that I, They've got franchises that I like. And, and they've so done good things in the past as well that they don't necessarily own anymore. But yeah, yeah. you know. EA, however, 
are they're they're the cartoon villains of the video game industry yeah. and sometimes it's a bit unfair but if you're comparing the three companies and the amount of talented development studios that EA has just destroyed mm. either through poor management um or or just stupid business decisions yeah it's that alone gets gets them thrown right in the bin for, from my perspective but then when you look at their actual franchises and i start to wonder if there's anything that i would miss if ea disappeared forever yeah what what do they make that well, that's I what i mean about? like if they disappeared you know they don't own star wars they just have no. the rights to make the game so the license would just go to someone else i don't care about battlefield I don't care about FIFA. I don't care about the sports games. No. I mean, I know people would miss them, but I wouldn't. The Sims. The Sims, I suppose, but the, even The I Sims isn't what the Sims. the Sims was. No. You know, again, that's been sort of diluted to the point where it's almost unrecognizable. Yeah, no, I know some people would miss it, but I, at this stage, I wouldn't. So. Screw EA. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, if you'd like to sort yeah, of no, reply we'd... to our emails and send us review copies. I do stuff, need to request would, would Star really Wars. I appreciate case. that. <laughs> but in a hypothetical situation where you would be thrown in the bin forever, get in there. Get in, get in that get bin. Get right in that bin. Thank you, Duncan's Wilson. Mm. Peter, it's time for a section that is both groundbreaking and extremely arousing. Scarlet Fire. It's time for what we play in peeps. Mm. Uh, what are... We what are we you playing? What are we, what are we, we what are we you playing? The we I don't know. I've never had one, but uh, I've certainly this week uh, been enjoying. In fact, I complete pretty much completed yeah? in one sitting. No, Rugrats: uh, Search for Reptar. Really made me wait for that one on PlayStation One. Was this a worst game? Uh, no. Yes, it wasn't an actual. No, we did worst studio game. tour. Didn't yeah, we? I mean the point. Like it, it could have been a worst game but I just played it on stream instead. Nice. I used to own it, and so there's enough of a nostalgia factor and me knowing what I'm doing that it's sort of okay enough that I was happy to sit and just enjoy the the horrible face textures, uh, you know, the weird voice acting, the strange music. Um, But yeah, it was, was, I think, came before the one that we played, Studio Tour. I think it came before that. Okay. Um, Oh, yeah, I remember you saying on the episode that it has a lot of mechanics that are just recycled yeah. straight over. But arguably, I think the first one was more interesting. Um, there are some, like, genuinely interesting levels that... Do you remember the problem with Studio Tour is it was very repetitive. It was rinse and repeat. Like, you would go into a mini game and it would be like, hey, round up the chickens, and then round two. Hey, round up the chickens and the b- d- rabbits. Hey, round up the chickens and the rabbits, but now they're moving around. Oh. And uh, then, then there was that bit where you were searching for all those reptile bars as Angelica. Rawr. Which, yeah. Rawr. Just constantly. Awful. Uh, but uh, the the game that I played on stream the other day was um, basically every, every level um, is pretty different to the one that came before it. You do mm-hmm. one where you go to a toy shop. There's one where you're in a supermarket and you're a lost... A lost baby in a supermarket. Okay. There's one where you end up on the ceiling and the house is upside down. Oh. There's a really scary one where it's nighttime and your nightlight is running out of battery and there's all these ghosts coming oh at you. Oh my god. Yeah, it's horrible. It sounds appropriate. And yeah. relevant, there's one with a goose in it that is quite um it's sort of scary and violent. Goose in it. Yeah. It's it's the original untitled goose game. My goodness. Yeah. My gooseness. My gooseness. So that was a little trip. I quite enjoy playing all these like old PS1 games on stream. It also gives me something to talk about when I've just been playing more Uncharted. Right. At home on my PlayStation. How are you PS4. getting on with Uncharted? You on three yet? Yeah, I'm on three now. Nice. I'm like halfway through. I'm enjoying it. You played, what's it called? The one, that other one, uh, Lost Legacy. Lost Legacy. Yeah. Mm. What did you think of that one? I liked it. I. I kind of feel like... That bit where you were driving around in that semi-open, well, not open world, but you know the kind of non-linear bit where Big there's field. various towers to go to yeah. in any order. That kind of, in my head, just took forever. Right. Like, I feel like that was eight hours of game time, even <laughs> though it wasn't. Yeah, it did and, extend the game, didn't it? And when I think about it, just driving round and round in that area, it just made me think, oh, I didn't really like that game. But I did. You know, mm. it was an Uncharted game, and it felt like one. I prefer playing as Drake, not because the women are women. 
Peter Austin confirmed sexist. Sexualist. But <laughs> I, I just like Drake as a character, you know. Yeah. I do like Chloe. Um, I, I don't know about what she's called, Nadine? Uh, yeah, Nadine. She's just a bit grumpy. Ross. Nadine Ross. Yeah. She's a little bit grumpy. I, I really liked it. Like, I really liked that Where do you rate game. it? In... I think it was underrated, personally. In, in... It was one of the lowest scoring Uncharted games. Yeah, but um, out, out of the five big ones, um, we don't talk about the PSP. Vita. V- no, Vita. I was going to ask, I you haven't played know. Golden Abyss, have you? No. You need to borrow my playstation tv so you can play it at home your psp and it won't work on that because it's not out on psp no you'll try and shove a cartridge into <laughs> the expansion bay that's yeah. that's a that's a naughty video you shouldn't look for as well right um out of the five big ones yeah so there's yeah there are it's technically the fifth big one wasn't yeah it? so yeah that's the i would say that one. from worst to best it for me it goes uncharted one mm-hmm. three yeah Lost Legacy, okay, two, mm. and then four, and I I know that two reviewed better than four, but you put them side by side. No, nah, like, oh yeah, my God, like how can you? Oh, four is just it's just unbelievable. Yeah, it it's really such is such a brilliant game. Because I thought like going into playing the 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 trilogy, um, I knew oh two's great. I remember two being really good. I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. And then I played it. I was like, yeah, that was that was really good. It was way better than one and. You know, it yeah, good, but I'd <laughs> since I played I'm not it happy last. About it. <laughs> well, since I played it last, I've played number four, and I was like, right, yeah, this this series still goes places though from here on in. It really does. You know? I'm so, so excited for the future of that series as well. And yeah, whatever that may hold, it'll be exciting. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad you're enjoying those. I bet yeah. you're really excited to get onto number four again. Cause yeah, I can't wait. Oh, such a Oh, oh, it's, just a, oh, it's just a movie from start to finish, isn't it? It's for Dobbledore. Although yeah. that, that does have some sort of open, linear bits when you've mm-hmm. got the boat and you can jump off it and stuff. Anyway, that's, yeah, that's it's true. a great game. It's a fantastic game. Mm-hmm. I have been playing more Borderlands 3. Oh, yeah? Uh, I played it actually predominantly in split screen. I went away over the weekend, as we discussed on last week's show, actually, yeah. that, that, that I was going away and you were also away. And not together. That would be... <laughs> inappropriate wouldn't it we'd have to sign all sorts of work release forms uh so i i brought a ps4 and i played uh borderlands in split screen for the Mm -hmm. first time (laughs) oh oh boy with your mother with yes with my mother no for the last time i wasn't with family peter oh yeah you uh, yeah i remember where you were No, i was there with my buddy um and we we play borderlands 3 and the split screen is not good oh no because the the menu the me- just the menu system, as I've spoken about before, is the for me the key source of performance issues. Mm. It just it's so slow and laggy and it's still like, an issue. Yeah, it's still an issue, ah. and it's kind of mental that, it, that this was ever okayed. And I don't know why it was released. I'm still really liking the game, I should say. And I actually, when I was playing it through in split screen, I didn't continue my playthrough because I knew that it wasn't very good in split screen. Right. So I started a new game with different characters okay. so I could experience it with you know playing in a different different character and um, there there's a clip it was my friend's PS4 so it's saved to his PS4 but there's a clip where he is um, he's got the the menu open and he's just cycling between tabs mm-hmm. and it shows the the second player me trying to move around and it just just can't do anything oh, at gosh. all because it's just so so laggy. How is that the case? Sure, I mean, I'm no expert know. in in software, but surely just our menu. Menus don't need to be that flashy. They're made of static things. It's crazy. I don't know how they've made the menu. I heard, um, I heard that perhaps it was maybe created as some sort of in-game object that's rendered there in oh, front right. of you, rather than just like. A, a UI. I don't really. You know, she I'm says could tell you. Not a not a game developer. No. But it was. It was unplayable when, you know, when, when people were going into even just the vending machines, you'd press square to go into the vending machine and, and it would just be like, huh? oh, OK, mm. we're in. It was just shocking, oh, really. A shame. It's a real shame. And it's something I s- sincerely hope they can fix or at least are able to patch in perhaps even just an alternative for the menu. Yeah. It's like, would you like a stripped back menu? Yes. That works. I don't want this. We've said this before. So slow. I think I might have said it last week when we were talking about this. How does that get past QA? 
Surely someone opened the goddamn menu when they were testing the game. I don't, I don't, I do not understand. No, me and neither. And you play it on a pro as well. I do. And it still doesn't. On performance mode. And it still doesn't work properly. It's laggy in single player when you're in and out of menus. And that lag is multiplied tenfold when you're in split screen because it actively affects the other person yeah. playing. Because they, even if they're not in a menu, and if you're both in menus. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's it's Rip. unbelievable. I've still only had one crash, actually, okay. which is kind of surprising, but I've had some long pauses. Mm -hmm. And when you first load in in split screen, sometimes none of the textures are there for a considerable amount of time. And the the like the like the map and the UI and stuff, is it's sort of there on a... Even that doesn't have textures. It's there on sort of a base level. There's the shape of a map, yeah. but you're not on it. <laughs> it's just... It's weird stuff. It's all performance stuff which is astonishing because I really like everything else. Mm -hmm. I like the game. I like the story. I like the characters. I like what, you know, I, I, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. But it's just the performance issues are, are shocking. And Damn. there was a patch for it as well the other week that didn't seem to do anything. Uh. So I'm hoping, I think the PC version might be in worse shape. Mm -hmm. So that might be what they're prioritizing. But I really hope that the, the PS4 version gets a patch soon because I am kind of... I'm a bit miffed, Peter. Oh, I'm a bit miffed. A bit miffed. A bit oh. miffed. But it's still a good game. Still enjoying it. Yeah. It's time for another question. It is. This question comes from Peter. Gutter snipe. <clears throat> oh, God. It gets worse every time. It's got shivers down my spine. I heard that word. Just someone used it in con in a non-triple jump context the other day. I think it was on telly or something. So I really? went, you dirty gutter snipe. I was like, oh. You sure you weren't watching the uh, Call of Duty G-Spots and there was someone hiding in a in a gutter? Bit yeah, drain. with a with a gutter sniper oh, rifle. Oh, and that's a shockingly good gutter snipe. <laughs> no scope. Yes. Uh, gutter, gutter snipe asks, says, Hi, lads. I'm about to get a platinum for Brawlhalla without spending a penny. Mwah, ha, ha, ha. And was wondering Mwah, your ha, thought. Ha. Or it's on free-to-play console games. Perhaps there's something to take advantage of, or are they at the forefront of microtransaction hell? I'll let you decide. Cheers, and all the best. Thank you, Gutter Snippy. Thank you. Um, free-to-play games. Mm. They scare me. I don't like them because I'd rather... It's just like... I, I know that they're, their origins largely, at least the modern day version of a free to play game lie in iPhone games mobile yeah mobile games because that's a very monetizable model and you can make a lot of money from it mm -hmm. however when it comes to games i would and the same with iPhone games i would rather there be a premium version available so i don't have to sit through all this this nonsense this gated stuff this yeah. cool down timers before you can do certain things now not all games are like that no. but a lot of them are and i think if you say you're going free to play, there is a substantial amount of baggage that goes with that and a, and a lot of prejudice, perhaps, because people think free to play and they don't think necessarily Fortnite. Yeah. Um, uh, they think, God, I don't know, Farmville or yeah. something like that. Dungeon Keeper. Uh, Mobile. Mo yeah, whatever it was called. Well, you've got to wait for hours like a day before you can carry on playing again or Har or that harry potter game on on, on oh, mobile that's Do you remember shame, that one isn't it? yeah with the where where there's that famous screenshot of of the child that you play as oh yeah getting strangled or asphyxiated by some kind of plant and oops you've run out of energy for the day come back tomorrow yeah. and meanwhile your child's being strangled yeah in in horrific fashion by some devil's snare or something yeah. what yeah. do you think yeah, I think I agree. Like, you know, immediately you kind of, it's a bit of a dirty word, isn't it? You think, oh, well, there's but there's loads of like loot crates in that and oh, p p pay to win, pay to win, gross. But, you know, you think of something like Team Fortress 2, that's free to play now anyway, it didn't start free to play, but they just do the, the old cosmetic hats deal mm. uh, instead, which is always a good way to do it, I think. Um, and yeah, also some games, even like mobile games that are free to play, uh, they they don't they they have mechanics in place that maybe you can buy a bit more of the in-game currency to like buy power ups and stuff, but they they might not be there might be something you can live without. Like I've got one that I sometimes play when I'm just on a train or whatever, mm. where it's a bit Tetrisy, but you have complete freedom of movement rather than like on a grid system, and you just drop a load of shapes and you have to make the tallest tower. 
So it's almost tricky like towers. It might be called tree. It's something towers, yeah. Okay. Um, but it's it's like inverse Tetris. Instead of trying right. to delete lines, you're trying to get it as high as possible. Mm -hmm. And there's various powers you can get there. You earn a little bit of in-game currency every time you play, or if you want to watch an ad, you can do that, um, or you can just pay for the in-game currency. Mm -hmm. But all you do is spend that on either cosmetic stuff, I think, um, or powers that allow you to like rotate the shape or like do certain things. And I'm like, I'm fine without it. I get enough pleasure out of that game just trying to stack blocks in the most like vanilla form of the game. Yeah. So you know, as long as as long as it's not really trying to force something down your throat by basically making the game unplayable mm -hmm. like Dungeon Keeper or Pokemon yeah. uh, and saying, hey, you, you better pay otherwise you're not playing this again for another 24 hours, then, uh, you know, they just, just have to be thoughtful about it. So it's not inherently a bad thing. What did Pokemon do? Uh, Pokemon, oh, sorry, did I just say Pokemon? What was yeah. I thinking of? Uh, no, Dungeon Keeper and Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Yeah, okay, so, right. Yeah. yeah, same thing. I was thinking about They've both um, got a, uh, an electric Pikachu mouse in it. Yeah, and no, it, I think because there's that new Harry Potter um, Pokemon Go game, which I don't think is oh too bad on the on the microtransactions. You can get but, some Snuffle Puffs and some Gnort. Yeah, Gnort boys, Gnasty Gnorts. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing, though. Your, I suppose your your example there, it's less insidious when it's a mobile game because you're just dipping into it for like an hour here mm. and there like maybe once a week maybe less often than that yeah i think i mean fewer often you do um whereas if you know if with a console game you've got to sit down and play mm. that can be really ob obstructive to you actually playing it and enjoying it now it sounds like brawlhalla it's it's interesting that it has a platinum because a lot of free-to-play games don't yeah um no, I'm not familiar with that game, but it sounds like it's it, it's actually free to play done right, and it is it is possible. I the only free to play game I've ever played properly is DC Universe Online, mm -hmm. which I played whoa, way back in the early days of the PS4's release, so years ago now, a right. few years ago, and I actually opted to pay for a membership because that's how they did it. You could play the entire game for free if you wanted, or you could get a membership, because that's how you got trophies in the game. Oh. And the trophy seemed somewhat obtainable, and it was cross-save and therefore cross-platinum on PS3 and PS4. Okay. So if you got the platinum on one, you got the platinum on the other, so you got two platinums for one, basically. Nice. And that was a decent model. You know, MMOs have been doing free-to-play for quite a while, a lot of them, and mm. they seem to work okay. DC Universe Online seemed to work okay, but in general... I think if it has free to play on it and it's a console game, I tend to either do research or just avoid it altogether. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Like I think you know, on on console, in my opinion, it should just be cosmetic for the mm. most part, or even unobtrusive ads. I mean, you don't really see ads on console free to play games, but you know, if if a free to play game is going to do ads, I prefer them if they're just sort of banner ads down the edge rather than a right. video that comes up in your face and it's like you'll be able to skip this in 15 seconds like if i'm playing a game mm. i don't want that getting in the way no but yeah i think as, as long as you know just being thoughtful and they're not trying to make you wait like two days uh, so that you really feel like you have to spend money or again like you say i would almost rather with some of these games just pay like 2.99 or like you know mm. fiver and then just not that's it not i've have, got i've got a version now that i can actually play yeah and not have to worry about not be interrupted all the time free to play related mechanics yeah so those are our thoughts on free to play games yeah let us know what you think thinks let us know what you thinks use thinks use thinks since there's a comments or wherever it is that you're listening let us know i think a weird thing is about to happen do you yeah that's odd because i don't Oh. Let's move on to normal, regular news. This just in. Yeah. Oh, it's another lie. It's weird news time. It's weird news time. What's it time for, Peter? It's time for weird news. It's time for weird news. Um, last week, hmm. or the week before, yeah. I, uh, I did a thing about... Red Dead. You remember the zombie lady? Oh, it yes. Might have been two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. I've got more Red Dead news this oh, week. Oh, my goodness. Good news. Oh, weird, my good news. Weird Red Dead news. This is according to Kotaku. Kotaku. I've not done a Kotaku one for a little while. Hmm. Uh, Zach Zvison, or Zvison, Zvison, I think. Zvison. Uh, who says, 
A large group of Red Dead Online players try to carry balls of soup across the entire map. Uh, so this is a strange thing that everyone okay. there's a photo of them all together there. Oh wow! There's loads of them all posing with their soup. Dozens of them with their soups. Walk what it, sorry, what was your hot take on soup again from main menu? The that episode we did on soup. Oh, uh, it's something like it. It's trying to be food, but it isn't, or something like that. I don't. It does. I don't really rate soup. It. Do, I don't think it really knows what it wants to be. That was it. That's yeah. That's Peter Austin's take on soup. It's like, am I a drink? No. Am I a food? Apparently, but no. This guy. Yeah. Walking across large open world maps has been done many times and has even been documented numerous times on this very site. Whoa! Oh. That's mad. But walking across an entire map carrying a big old bowl of stew, <laughs> now that is something you don't see every day. <laughs> that was the odd objective of a recent meet and walk attended by... That's hyphenated. Meet and walk. Meet and walk. Mm -hmm. uh, M-E-E-T, not M-E-A-T. Oh, okay. I know they're having stew, but... Meet and Walk, attended by a large group of Red Dead Online players, also known as Walk Meets. <laughs> These are events where large groups of players get together and walk around to various locations, encountering animals, criminals, and other obstacles along the journey. This mm. soup walk was filmed by Reddit user Slonitram okay. and set up by Red Dead Online player Zoobs. Okay. So, more than 20 players met up at a campfire in the southwest area of the large Red Dead online map and made some stew. Then, each player grabbed a hot bowl of soup and began the long walk across the world. One major problem uh, players dealt with on the walk was server issues. Ah. Rather than, you know, cougars or whatever. Right. Red Dead Online will constantly kick players. This is something I experience nearly every day I play Red Dead Online. Uh, it's also, uh, it is annoying, and it also means that when you log back into the game, you no longer have your bowl of stew. Oh, no. And nobody wants to lose soup that way, it says. Is it soup, stoop, or, stoop or soup? Which, I think he's just trying not it? to, you know when you're writing, you don't want to keep saying the same word. They're not quite synonymous, though, are they, No, really? they're not, they're very different. Yeah, um, stew does know what it wants to be, I would say. Okay, whatever, Peter, soup leave doesn't. soup alone. But server problems weren't the only danger players faced on their long soup walk. Bounty hunters, runaway horses, other players who weren't part of the walk, and basically any other danger normally found in Red Dead Online. There's just a gif of a really yeah. fast train going It past. got really bad. Oh my god, are they all getting hit by train? Yeah. Why didn't they move? I don't know. <laughs> stood there waiting to be hit with their soup. I, I feel like maybe they sort of said, we're just going to walk, and if a train comes, then the train I'm comes. I'm just going to keep swinging my fists. We'll get to that. Uh, basically, uh, any other danger normally found in Red and Online caused the walkers headaches. At one point, a large portion of the group was taken out by a train, and then it just says, the hazards of soup walking. Yes. Fragment, consider revising. That's true. Uh, so here's a, here's a proper look at... Oh, that's, a, that's at least seven or eight of them dead there. Yeah. Just plowed down by a train. Soup spilt. Making this challenge harder... What? Making this challenge harder... Oh, I see. This, yeah. Making this challenge harder <laughs> is that to keep the soup, players can only walk. You can't get on a horse, run, or grab a ride on a wagon. And you can only walk so fast, which means a train can hit you if you ain't careful, it oh, says. no. Over the course of the walk, many players ended up losing their stew, and eventually a new camp was set up, and more stew was handed out. <gasps> also, for some reason, some players at this point in the walk started to carry large fish with them. Eventually, hmm. as players continued to lose their stew bowls, people switched to carrying dead bodies. Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Not even Slonitram, the person filming the walk, had a good reason for the change. Eventually, the large group reached their destination on the east coast of the map and celebrated by getting drunk and seeing a movie. Slonitram, I always say his name like that, it's just a, a strange word, has also tried to carry Stu across the map alone and has documented those adventures on their channel. Red Dead Online might not have enough content for some players and the servers might still be a mess, but at least it has stew. We can all be happy about that. Sounds like there's plenty of stuff to do. Yeah. If, if most of a server is carrying <laughs> bowls of soup across the map. Or sometimes fish or dead bodies. Yeah. Wow, that was... 
That was weird. An adventure that people have all shared together because I enjoyed it. There's bugger all else w- functional content <laughs> on that. I played that. a little bit of Red Dead Online mm-hmm. and then didn't yeah, didn't go back to it. I mean, we didn't even really like Red Dead well, that's single the thing. player. Yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of Red Dead full stop, mm. so well there we are. Yeah. Thanks Peter. You're welcome. We now go to Polygon. Polygon. Okay. This comes from Nicole Carpenter. Streamer creates where oh, I didn't talk about Untitled Goose Game. Oh, that you played. Oh, what are you playing? I played it from start to finish on stream, and it was absolutely delightful. Mm-hmm. I've seen, you know, I know, I know it's sort of in the zeitgeist at the moment. A lot yeah. of people are playing it, but if you can play it, it's about two hours long, and it's really good. Yeah, it's a really lovely little game. You, you should always talk about it next week. No, it's too late. What you play in two weeks ago? I finished it anyway, so I'll forget. I'll forget all about it. Thank you to House House for sending us a code as well. Thank you, House House. Really, really, really good game. Go mm, play it pretty. anyway. Streamer creates wearable goose suit to play Untitled Goose Game. Oh. Honest- wearable goose suit, as Honest- opposed to just goose suit. There he is. We- okay. You see him? He's all got his arms wrapped up. He's all... He's all got his arms wrapped up. He's swaddled up. He looks like he's wearing... He's wearing flippers. Yeah. And he's got a, a beak on. Yeah. He's wearing a... He's, he's, wearing, he's got his Tracy beak on. A bill. I mean, uh, if he hurts himself, sure. Mm. But it'll cost him a lot. Dylan Ru- Rudism? Yeah. Dylan Rudism Beck, the Twitch streamer who plays games wrong, created a wacky controller to play Developer House House's untitled Goose game. In a live stream a couple of days ago, Rudism showed off his latest creation himself as a goose, wearing a rig that helps him play untitled Goose game. <laughs> Here's how it works. Movement is tied to the flippers on his feet, but he controls direction through a thumbstick. To move, he has to walk in place, hobbling like a goose. A pair of white gloves are rigged to control the goose's wings. If he wants to flap his goose's wings, he needs to flap his own wings. Naturally, Rudism has a white sheet he's draped over himself to give himself a more goose-like appearance. But he's like squatting down. Like Imagine having to flop around on the spot all, all night. It looks really uncomfortable. Yeah. But in Untitled Goose Game, one of the more important controls is the honk. For that, Rudism created a voice-activated beak that he strapped to his face. Weirdly enough, there is blood all over the beak. Oh my god. Um, But was being quite coy about how he injured himself during the creation process. (laughs) If it sounds complex, that's because it is. Rudism had to strap himself into the controllers in a process that takes quite a long time. (laughs) At the 25-minute mark of his video... Rudism was able to start playing Untitled Goose Game. Oh. Unfortunately for Rudism, it's an extremely tiring way to experience the game, and after a while, he had to switch from his squatting position to a chair where he was still able to stomp his feet to move. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised. His goose controller lasted about an hour before it broke, so he moved on to another one of his creations, the Rocket League guitar controller. Right. Thankfully, Rudism wrote on Twitter that he'll fix up the goose's wiring and do more Untitled Goose Game this week. Wonderful. That sounds like a good channel. I love things like that where people are just completely break the the rules with gaming yeah yeah i'm just gonna load up a little clip here i'm gonna have to check that guy out and see if he's done any there he is look at him he's just all swaddled up in a oh wow (laughs) whack they don't whack they honk so as he's making that no- oh wow he's flapping his arms and the goose is oh my god that's amazing and he's saying honk and it's honking and he's just waddling in place that's fantastic. That's really good. Well done, him. Well done, Rudism. Yeah. And thank you, Polygon, for bringing that to our attention yes, as well. Yes, thank you, Polygon. Fantastic. Well, that was some weird news, wasn't it? It was. What a great laugh. Weird things have happened. Didn't we all have a good laugh? Yeah. Let's move on to a question. Let's. This is from Espurious. Espurious. Very generous donator and supporter of the channel. Mm. What's your favorite gaming peripheral, whether you owned it or not? Funny looking joysticks, monstrous add ons for the Game Boy, etc. Mine is the goose costume for Untitled Goose. <laughs> Rudism's <laughs> goose costume. Yeah. Um, in terms of official ones, uh, I've got, I got three here that yeah. sort of slot into different categories. Tell me. I think the one that looks the best, without a doubt, and I've mentioned it on a previous podcast, is the uh, Resident Evil 4 chainsaw controller. <laughs> it looks amazing. It doesn't even make sense because Leon never wields a chainsaw at any point. Only no. his enemies do. But for some reason, you're using a chainsaw controller. Of course. It's really unergonomic, but it, yeah, it just looks good. I think it even, citation needed, I think it makes sounds as well. Be whip. I think, 
Oh, I, don't, I can't read it. Oh. It's too high up. Okay. It's out, science, it's fact is, frame. science fact is slotted in, but I can't see it. So. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But I, I'm sure I've heard that. Maybe I'm just conflating. That maybe there's a toy, a separate toy that does it. I, I don't know. Maybe if you quack, it it revs. Yeah, if you honk, uh, it flaps its wings yeah. in the game. Yes. Um, I think in terms of like what it added to the industry, the N64 Rumble Pack, that was the first ever vibrating controller and now it's just a standard that we all expect mm -hmm. and it would be really weird if <laughs> there was a controller release that didn't rumble wouldn't it ps3 yeah wouldn't, ps3 wouldn't it wouldn't it um and uh in terms of rid ridiculousness yeah have you seen the gamecube keyboard controller oh i don't think i have imagine you take a gamecube controller mm -hmm. um bit of a bulky boy saw it in half yeah and just Put it onto the oh, side no. of a keyboard. So sort of like a switch, but, but a full but sized, wrong. a giant QWERTY keyboard with like F keys and a numpad, a space oh, bar. No. It's got it's not even, you know, specially designed. It's not like a little Blackberry keyboard. It's <laughs> like a you know, a sixty centimeter What's that for? I, I don't know. What? To type into into the game for for some reason, rather than yeah. just use the D pad. That's bizarre. Do you remember when uh, people were um, attaching a USB keyboard to Tony Hawk's? It might have been American Wasteland, or no, maybe it was an older game than that. Uh, but people were putting a USB keyboard into their, I guess, their PS3, and by typing in loads and loads of like forward slashes. They were able to break the character limit on sending messages. And receiving one of those messages would crash your PS3. Oh, no. Even if you didn't open it. So people were just trolling each other by sending like loads and loads uh. and loads of really long messages just with forward slashes in them. It was like that text that people were sending around on iPhones that would just completely wreck your phone oh, I don't it, know like, it would that. like brick your phone supposedly it would right. brick your phone if you received that text oh my god um that was an interesting time wow madness uh, i've gone a little bit more um this is legitness uh yeah the light boy for the game boy now i didn't have an actual light boy because of you know you don't get anything branded, do you, as a kid? Is unless... that the one, like the sort of awning? Yeah, the one in? that folds over and shines a light so you can actually see in the dark mm. while you're playing. Yeah. Um, I had one, I think my cousin gave me, after he'd used it for a considerable amount of time, almost to the point where it was broken, where it had these sort of, almost like the the ones that, that, you, that let you read at night with a sort of, uh, twisty, bendy yeah. uh, arms with a tiny little bulb on the end that you would just sort of point at the screen like mm -hmm. two little spotlights. I had one of those. And it was just such a such a game changer. Really? Being able to see in the dark what you're playing. I still think backlit technology is still just so fascinating yeah. and, and amazing. Not fascinating. I'm not like a caveman. but You, you understand how it works. I understand but... <laughs> the physics of it. Yeah. Uh, it's not magic, but it's just... I remember car rides trying to play my Game Boy in the dark and Just not like... yeah not being able to at all mm. it's like going through uh, it's like going through um um the tunnel in um our, our Pokemon Blue you know the big tunnel and you can't see anything without using flash so yes really hard and Any... when you're uh, playing Pokemon Blue in the dark you know, <laughs> it's just d doubly difficult when you're going through the tunnel you can't you... even see your, your buttons you can't see twice no it's it's twice as not see it's what they call a double blind test in this in the medical uh, industry that is science mm. that is a science um yeah so that that's amazing and and I like I like screens with lights on the back of them. I remember getting my... I bought my friend's Game Boy Advance SP, mm -hmm. which obviously has a backlit screen. And, and then I could play all my Game Boy games with a backlit yeah. screen. I was like, this, this is just the best thing. Perf. Ever. I love it. So, yeah. I think the Light Boy is probably my favorite. I had one peripheral. of those. I mean, I mean, I wasn't really... I had a Game Boy Color, and being the ungrateful little little shoot that yeah. I was... Yeah, gutter snipe. I didn't, yeah, gutter snipe. I didn't really play it that much well i had three games for it and i played those mm. but i never went out of my way to buy any more so you know right there's only limited <laughs> things i could do on it but it came with they must have my parents got it for me for christmas i think and they must have got some kind of bumper pack that came with a bunch of things it had like a little carry case i think it was yeah. like a bum bag or yeah. a fanny pack as they say yeah and then like a big chunky foldable it wasn't like a bendy reading light it was like mm. this big 
thing that slotted on and just had two right angled hinges <laughs> with like a it was like a big magnifying glass on the yeah. top and then lights on the side i um, that is something that i should probably buy for mm. my collection but i limited myself to merchandise that was officially branded as nintendo right because there was a lot of third party stuff that included which i think east Spirit is referring to as uh monstrous add-ons for the game Boy. I that see. one is it was monstrous it's huge you'd like slot your game boy into it and it's yeah. like double the size and, and it was orange like, like I, had a, I had like a sort of purpley game boy color and then just this big orange thing yeah. attached to it. it was horrible hideous but yeah. yeah i didn't buy that in the end all my as you can as you can attest to and also on my instagram at ben potter 20 mm. uh, i've posted all my um game boy stuff that i've got and i bought all of the official add-ons and accessories for the for the original game right and sadly that's not one of them because it doesn't have the nintendo mm -hmm. uh branding on it it's just game boy accessory oh they must have bought it separately then because like, i'm sure it came with my game boy and i don't know why my parents would have got that unless some sort of bundle from game or electronics yeah, boutique possibly. or something get the official console and also some cheap and stuff, also some really crap stuff. <laughs> well to be fair that's the first thing i tend to do with uh with i tend not to do it with playstation because i want the stuff that's going to last mm. but certainly when um, when we got that switch, yeah, I, I wanted a carry case of some kind so I could actually right. take it places. And I went straight on eBay and just bought the cheapest yeah. carry case that I could because it's just it's just a little case where the zip just detaches from itself <laughs> exactly. within yeah. like a week. It's sort of uh, it's <coughs> similar to wrapping it in cling film and hoping for the best. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that's that's that. It's time, Peter. From the small, tiny little Game Boy Color friend with its giant chunky peripheral it's time for a giantera giantera discussion big discussion we didn't do any there we go it's big this... discussion time or for the news wanted... oh yeah we well it was it. normal news wasn't it true it was another lie we don't need notes or papers for normal news because it's all just up there hello my name is hugh discussion yeah um and i've got a question that i've brought all the way from victoria pennington yeah and um my... batman's uh butler alfred pennington yes yeah yes and my friend uh peter austin is going to read it for you okay right now <clears throat> it's a big one. Oh boy what are your thoughts on using the likenesses of an actor in a game? Does it take away from your immersion, or is it something you don't tend to notice? For example, the use of Keanu Reeves in Cyberpunk 2077 trailer seemed to make the conversation about Keanu Reeves, not the game. That's true. Mm. Or in your recent sleepover stream of Man of Medan, I couldn't get past immediately recognizing the voice actor and face twin that played Conrad, the skeezy guy who doesn't know how to figure out how far a storm is. Or is it perhaps more about the quality of the actor slash material not being good enough to make you forget that it's being acted? I was never bothered by Ellen Page as Ellie in The Last of Us. It says in this, which we will talk about in a minute. But I didn't think the look, but 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 I didn't think the lookalike was a hundred percent. Yeah, the question has gone all over the place, so I will wrap it up there. As always, you're both fantastic, and I hope you're having a lovely week. Love to you both, Ben. Yeah. Why did Victoria Pennington not think that the Ellen Page lookalike was 100%? Because it weren't her. It weren't her. It this weren't was, her, though. This was the controversy. Yeah. Is that Ellen Page said, you've based that character on me. I don't like it. But why in, have you done that? Why you'd gone and done that? But actually... It weren't her. It weren't her. So it did look almost 100%, but not quite 100%. They changed it in the end as well. Well, yeah, they did, actually. They changed they, how they, Ellie looked. They, uh, they de-paged her. Um, but yeah. she was played by Ashley Johnson. Yeah. Both face and voice. Who won a ba I want to say she won a BAFTA for it as yeah. well. Yeah. For her role as Ellie. Well, they should have asked us about that, really. They should have they? asked Ellen Page, I think, mainly. Uh, uh, well, I'm just saying we're an expert on BAFTA. Well, gaming. there's no Nazis in that game, so when there are... Yeah, well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see in The Last of Us 2. There might be some. I am... I can say almost certainly... Yeah. ...that we will never go back to BAFTA again. No. Not because of any any wrongdoing, just because that opportunity will never be granted to us ever again. Yeah, we will never be in the right circles, you know, in or in the right company where they'll say, oh, should we ring up Triple Jump and see if... It's not, it's not personal to us. 
I don't think no. BAFTA... Say we, we did miraculously end up in a company that frequently sent BAFTA reps... I don't think they go, oh, wait, hang on. No, we were going hang to ask on, no. this company, but it's it's the Nazi boy. They're and, the guys who sit with the their hands one. crossed in front of them because they don't, they've never done a live stream quite so terrifying Because they've before. been working for that channel for three weeks and now they're on actual <laughs> BAFTA. <laughs> they're on BAFTA. Help. <laughs> Help. We've been employed by Yogscast for <laughs> 12 days. We're now representing <laughs> them on a, probably a global globally watched live stream. I did get a lot of Facebook messages after that, though, from people I worked in game development from, just saying, what the hell were you doing there? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Nice I wore hot my takes only on the... <laughs> shoes that were smart. <laughs> Under the table. Nice yeah. hot takes on the Nazi party, though. <laughs> Down with them. <laughs> then you're it. all right to kick them. Yeah. Anyway, uh, anyway. Yeah, so that, what were you we talking about? Ellen Page. So this is something we did talk about in one of our earlier podcasts i think it's somewhere in the first five or ten i stated quite strongly that i actually have a bit of an issue with seeing recognizable actors faces in video games Mm. and i can't really understand why it is because i see an actor's face less so if i just hear their voice like say if it's stephen fry narrating something or like you know john cleese has done a few video games Um, i can get i can get by with that just about but when i see someone's face I can't help but just see the actor as uh, opposed to when I'm watching a movie. I don't go, oh, look, that's that's actual Tom Cruise jumping yeah. out of a plane. I go, no, it's it's the, the, the character's name out of Mission Impossible, whose name I've forgotten. Uh, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, oh, Actually, yeah. no, his name is Mr. It's Mission Impossible. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Who's your favorite Mission Impossible guy? Oh, it's got to be Mission Impossible from Mission Impossible. Yeah, that, that guy. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm able to separate those on my head, but I think the issue lies in, or the, the issue <laughs> lies in the fact that... I think you mean fewer. Yeah, you're scanning in or in the olden days, just sort of trying to make it look like yeah. an actor. And because it looks a bit uncanny, my brain is going like, oh, that looks a bit like Tom Cruise. Or PS2 Fahrenheit David Cage is my favorite. Right, yeah. It does it. It's it's just a balding man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think if they looked perfect, which, you know, they won't do for probably still a, a long time because there'll always be a bit of uncanniness, mm. then I would probably be able to get by it. Like, what was that um, live-action game that's just come out called? Erica. Erica. I probably would have been fine with that. I mean, partly because uh, she's not that famous, whatever her name is, I've forgotten. <laughs> but, oh, God, um, yeah, Erica. <laughs> yeah, Erica, you know, that one. Yeah. Um, but... I did recognize her from like skins and stuff. And I think I would have been fine because she's an actress and that's her actual face. I've never seen her before in my life. She was in Doctor Who as well. I've never seen her before in my life. Um, But, you know, she was captured with a camera and it was her actual self. But, you know, if they'd sort of just tried to make her a person in a game out of polygons, I would have been put off. You don't have as much of a problem with it, though, right? I am. I'm getting there. Yeah. I must admit. And I think, honestly, it's the oversaturation of uh, the golden trio. Troy Baker, Nolan North, and... Um... The one who plays all the women. Yeah, the one who plays... Laura Bailey. Laura Bailey. Who plays all the women. Um, I think they're all extremely talented and, mm. and incredible performers. But now that they've started to do likenesses, it's for some reason, it's more jarring to see... Uh, Troy Baker's likeness in Metal Gear Solid 5 and in Death Stranding than it is to see Keanu Reeves in Cyberpunk. Right. I, I understand the argument for sure that both you and Victoria are making in that it sort of distracts from mm. the actual game. But I still think it's quite exciting when a big sort of movie star does a game. I yeah. think there's a novelty to it mm-hmm. because they're not in every game. Whereas these guys are in every game. Right. And they can do great stuff. Troy Baker does not sound like Troy Baker when he's playing Joel. Nolan yeah. North does not sound like Nolan North when he's playing that horrible, horrible man that he played in The Last of Us. Right. But it seems that they are more often than not asked to play the sort of characters that people are most familiar with them. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, most familiar with. 
So you'll find Nolan North sounding like Nolan North in an awful lot of games. Mm -hmm. And most people will think Nolan North is synonymous with Uncharted. But then you start hearing Nathan Drake pop up in Destiny. And then you start hearing Nathan Drake pop up in countless Deadpool, countless other right. games, you know? And and it's happening. It's, it's, it's getting... I, I don't have a huge problem with that, but it is getting harder to sort of not stomach the games, but suspend your disbelief where it's like, ah, oh, it's Troy Baker again. But why is... I still... I mean, although I try to justify it in my, in my answer, why is that? Because you see Martin Freeman in a TV mm. show or a film, and you don't really think... Oh, that's Martin Freeman. Oh, can't get that out of my head. It's Martin Freeman. No, it's not. It's just the character he's playing. I don't understand why that happens, though. Maybe it's something to do with the differences in the mediums of, like, TV and film mm. and video games. Because video games, you're you're more involved, perhaps. Yeah. And they're much longer. And they perhaps... I mean, I know it's an actor's responsibility to portray a role and disappear into that role, but... Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man for yeah. a lot of people. And if you see him in other stuff, they might think, you know, some some younger viewers might think, oh, what Iron Man's in this. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. But most people are able to think that's Robert Downey Jr. And, you know, he's he's an actor and he does stuff. Yeah. But when it comes to games, perhaps there's enough of a difference where, especially when you're seeing the same three people mm. over and over again, it's not so bad with um, Laura Bailey. It's mainly her voice. Yeah. That, that is all over the place. I don't think she's... She's probably mo a lot of stuff, but I'm not actually sure what she looks like. But I know what Nolan North looks like, and I know what Troy Baker looks like, because as performance capture increases in quality, and and facial capture as well, mm. the characters they portray look more and more like them. Which, in these disparate video game worlds and universes where there's... <laughs> all these people who look very similar to each other. And they're kind of similar characters anyway. It, it, they don't need to look like them. Mm. It's not necessary for them to look exactly like Troy Baker. It no. can sound like Troy Baker, or Troy Baker can do a voice, which we know he can do. Um, and again, they're all very talented people. But you don't have to make it look like him. Yeah. Because video games offer you the opportunity for belief to be completely suspended and they can look like anybody. Definitely. That's that's a big difference for me. As I say, when I see someone's face, it's it's a, it's a visual thing that I find distracting. If it's just John Cleese's voice, you know, I can still hear that it's John Cleese. Of course I can. Or Stephen Fry or whoever, but it doesn't bother me as much. In the same way that... Um, uh, uh, why uh, can't we do names today? Who did Gollum... Oh, uh, uh, yes, I know who you're talking about. The the guy. The guy who does all the mocap in movies, or certainly did for a long period of time. I'm just going to look it up. Yeah, it's gone from why my have head we, as well. I can't remember his name. Andy Serkis. Yes, it was Andy Serkis. We got him. Andy Sorry, Serkis. carry on. Oh, um, but, you know, when he does a voice, usually uh, they completely change his face, you mm. know. Snoke doesn't look like Andy Serkis. No, uh, that that chimp man doesn't look like Andy Serkis. No, the chimp man doesn't. I think uh, Gollum does to an extent because the <laughs> uh, because Smeagol was played by him yes, live action, true. right? Yeah. But you know, for the most part, Andy Serkis doesn't look like Andy Serkis when he plays someone. And I don't, I don't really think, oh, that's Andy Serkis when I hear him because uh, unless I know it is because I've seen like promotional stuff. I don't always notice it because he's quite a talented man, at, you know, doing different things. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's just, just something about seeing someone's face. And I think maybe you're right in the terms of like the involvement in the medium. Like maybe it's a bit like when you're watching a movie or a TV show, you're kind of sitting back as an observer. Uh, whereas with a video game, although you're still sitting on your sofa and looking at a screen, you're kind of in in there in a way. You right. have a role, like you're playing one of the characters in that world. Mm -hmm. And it is almost like you are actually standing there in that scene. And it's like you're standing there and standing in front of you is a recognizable face. Right. You know, and it's almost, you know, it's kind of equivalent to getting starstruck. Like if you were sitting in a cafe and, uh, you know, Keanu Reeves walked in, you'd be like, oh, it's oh. Keanu Reeves. And then he'd do the hover hand thing. Yeah, he would, yeah. Oh, you're breathtaking. Uh, so in the same way that when you're walking around a cyberpunk street and Keanu Reeves walks past you, you kind of go, oh, that's Keanu Reeves. Oh. Whereas if you were watching Cyberpunk, the movie on Netflix, you wouldn't think, oh, that's Keanu Reeves. You'd think, oh, no, that's... Um, Johnny Silverhand. Johnny Breathtaking. Yes. Yeah. So Breathtakings. 
Maybe that's an answer, but I, still, it's still a bit of a riddle to me why it bothers me as much as it does when I just don't have an issue with it in movies. It's, uh, maybe it's because games have been around so long and it's only now. It's only in the past 10 years mm. that we've really started to see yeah. people in them that we recognize. True. I think Keanu Reeves being in cyberpunk, yes, he's dominated the conversation, but I think it's only, I think it's a marketing masterstroke, to be mm. honest. It's absolutely probably the most anticipated game in the world probably yeah. um you know there's a lot of games that are up there the last of us part two uh final fantasy 7 remake yeah beyond good and evil mm -hmm. but i would say in terms of if you're looking at views on youtube cyberpunk is is it is ridiculously anticipated and i would argue that keanu Reeves has only helped that yeah. but i still i still get that you know he is he is distracting from the conversation about the game somewhat, but it's important. He's in it, you know. He's a big part of the game. Yeah, I think it's good for them marketing wise. And yeah, you're right that it was a really good a good move. It's it's working out very well for them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I do kind of think, can we just talk about the game, please? You know, I'm like, yeah, he's 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 good. He's, he's there. Great. He's, he's very good. Yeah, he's doing in his it. hover hands. Yeah, all sorts of stuff. Let's, let's just let's just see some more footage. Thanks. But the golden trio though, Nolan North and Troy Baker specifically, love them. Love mm. their work. Oh, yeah. Very good. They don't have to be in every game. And if they are, can they please do either crazy voices mm. or not be captured facially, captured in the face area? Yeah. Or you can, you know, you can mocap their face. You can do facial capture, but it doesn't have to, you don't have to put their face in the game. Like it doesn't Serkis. have to be their likeness. Exactly. Yeah. You know, put them, make, them, make them play a frog or something. I don't know. Yeah, a dragon, sm sm smog. I'm just sick of... <sighs> sick of seeing troy baker mainly <laughs> yeah i keep seeing troy baker everywhere and it really <laughs> annoys me but anyway that's that's that question thank you very much victoria for that let us know what your thoughts are on people being in games and if it's distracting mm. um and i'd uh, be interested to hear what you what you think about it yeah what you think about it mm. what what are some ways pr yeah where people can get in touch or like um check us out content wise people can check us out on uh youtube.com and twitch.tv forward slash team triple jump yeah that's where we do our videos and streams uh and also if you're listening to the audio version of the podcast you can sorry if you're watching the video version you can listen to an audio version at play.acast.com forward slash s forward slash triple, triple jump. jump that's all of our content there uh in terms of social medias yeah you've got twitter dot com and facebook dot com mm -hmm. forward slash team triple jump yeah and uh on the subject of our socials and content uh i would like to thank luke eldon who just single-handedly makes our facebook not a desolate wasteland thank you luke uh and uh, we've got some mods who sort out our chats and things when we're um streaming mm -hmm. uh lord brotovich and cecil prumps you're doing the lords and ladies or or girls work or girls work um We've got a Patreon. Mm. Patreon.com forward slash Team Triple Jump. Various rewards, including worst games early. Yeah. Questions for the podcast, things like that. Um, and uh, the website is triplejud.mup, mm -hmm. uh, where we've got a store and stuff. And finally, one of the rewards on Patreon is that you get a special room in our Discord. And uh, we can also we do a voice chat once a month with Dis Discorders. Discordians. Of a certain tier. Uh, bit.ly forward slash team triple jump for that for the discord and jack bradshaw is the mod there also doing a man or woman's work yes mm. or both yeah both of the works um that discord as well by the way you can just join it mm. you don't have to be a patreon uh supporter to join it no it's there's just a there's, special an, room. there's a special room within it for uh, patrons of a certain tier and a, an even special room for patrons of a of an even certain tier <laughs> yes where we talk to people absolutely if you'd like to follow us on twitter you can do at that peter austin and at confused underscore dude on instagram at that peter austin and at ben potter 20 you're right yeah just, just a, instagram was a loud one was Insta it? well it wasn't oh sorry decibelly loud it was, it was just, just excited tonally loud oh okay on instagram on, on instagram how's that yeah, yeah, that's okay. On Instagram. I mean, don't uh, undersell it. Oh, okay. On Instagram. Perfect. Better? Yeah. Instagram. 
uh, lists. We do those every Tuesday and Thursday. We did a big list this week, Peter. Oh, Nelly. It's the release of the uh, Mega Drive slash Genesis, Sega Mega Drive slash Sega Genesis Mini mm. in Europe. It's been out in America for a couple of weeks now. Mm. And uh, we've got another long list courtesy of our fantastic writer, Philip Reed. Oh, and he's good. Um, our wonderful in-office good boy, James, who's also- been working... Crazy hard. Very good. On on editing that together. We we pitched in at the last minute. Uh, poor Peter had to record a very, very long voiceover again. But well, I mean I mo I mean you do some long ones. I don't know why I always moan about it and you don't. Well yours yours so far have been significantly longer oh, than they? mine. Yeah. You've done a couple of sixty something entries yeah. and mine are like sort of forty, so it's not so not so bad. We've got a mammoth one planned for the end of the year as well, so keep an eye out for that. However, it is available right now. It's every Sega Mega Drive slash Sega Genesis uh, mini game mm. ranked from worst to best. And that includes all the different regions because the different regions, West, Asia, and Japan, mm. they have different games on them. They do. So please go and watch that um, if you're interested in picking it up. And we'll tell you exactly what each game is and whether it's worth your time and so, if you can even play it. So Laura, Laura Games. Yeah. As Scylla Black would say. Exactly. Rest in peace, Scylla Black. Rip. Rip. Uh, this is the Scylla Black cast now. Yeah. Uh, so go go please, go please and watch that. Mm. It's also Worst Games Ever week, as if that wasn't enough. Uh, so Worst Games Ever went out yesterday for patrons of a certain tier, and mm. it goes out on Sunday for everyone else. The podcast, of course, is every Saturday. We do streams every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Day. Day, thank you. Uh, Monday and Tuesday are on Twitch, and they are our solo streams. And Thursday is a joint Blaze It stream on YouTube. We were actually joined by Ross this week mm. from Cultaholic, uh, who've just passed 500,000 subscribers, we should say. Congratulations to Cultaholic. Fantastic. We're right. We're hot on their heels. So close. Oh, oh I'm so tired. Um, and Less than a tenth. Let's shh, 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 shh. And, uh, and we played some FIFA, and it was good fun. So. Mm. Please uh, please watch that VOD as well when that goes out, which should be soon. Finally, leave us a review on iTunes or your platform of choice. It helps uh, something to do with algorithms. And uh, we're going to be at EGX in a couple of weeks' time. As we've said before, we'll be there on the Thursday and for a bit of the Friday. We're going to be very busy, but I believe if you hop into that Discord and uh, ask about someone has someone's trying to organize some kind of meetup for Triple Jump viewers um, if you're if you're interested and you want to say hi to people who also enjoy the channel, we'll, we'll hopefully bump into as many of you as possible. Yeah. So hop into that Discord if you would like to find out more information. Bit.ly forward slash team triple jump. Mm-hmm. <sighs> One last sponsor. Okay. For Kratos's beard oil. It's full of Spartan rage. It makes your beard grow big. You do the hover hands with your boy child and also infanticide slash uh, mariticide which is what it's called when you murder your uh, your part your married partner your sp- your your wood spouse sorry wood, it's like a wood louse oh your wood spouse yeah also we don't know what happened to his wife in the new one so it could also cause you to then kill your second wife yeah um there's n- I can't not there I can't say for sure but you know it's it's a risk Dude's but got it's previous a, it's a really good beard though mm. so maybe use the oil maybe yeah, uh, yeah. That I think that was a convincing ad read. Thank you very much for for watching slash listening. Everybody will be back in a week's time. Have a lovely weekend. Bye. Bye. It's a good wave. Thanks. Thanks.